Perfect. I am rocking the Tim Pool beanie today because my hair <clears throat> is an absolute mess. Well, that's not so bad after I've, you know, greased it down with my own hand sweat. <laughs> uh, I, uh, when I was coming up here, I got on the elevator, and it's an elevator that has, you know, all those, uh, it's got mirrored walls. All those. It's got mirrored walls. And I looked immediately at myself. There were two other people that, like, I came in, was in the, I don't know, lobby waiting area right before the elevator. I always assume I'm a big presence, and I was obviously, I couldn't quite tell what they were speaking. I would maybe guess French. Um, would not be surprised, though, if it was just almost anything European. Um, but I would guess French. You know, I walk into that waiting area, and I just look, I've been out walking. I, I've walked almost 21,000 steps today, which is about three times more than I usually do. I was doing some night photography and night video capturing, you know was in the content mines, mining content. And I uh, came upon them, and I assume a rather haggard mess, and I tried to say hello in sort of almost like an affected Irish accent. I just tried to say hello, you know, just a, a register higher and maybe liltier than what I usually do. And they gave me kind of the same bag. They said hello, and then they started, you know, not right away, but they eventually started talking their own language. Uh, they When they said hello to me, it sounded very Irish in itself. And I thought that was, that's really funny how we're both trying to put on the, like we're in a, like a university dorm type of thing for like, international students. So, and it's something that in the summer is used for, you know, uh, vacationers. And it, it's very clear, like, neither of us are from here. I think there was another couple here that, um, th that's Irish. I've seen them cooking, heard them speak a little more, and so they sound Irish, so Irish people can come. <laughs> um, but I just assume the majority of travelers or visitors are uh, um, are from other countries. Anyway, it was a funny little moment to uh, have with them where it's like we're both trying to put on our Irishness and neither of us are fucking Irish at all. There's also the possibility that they were speaking Irish to each other. In which case, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what else did I do today? I, um, I went to a bunch of museums. I went to, uh, Trinity College, very beautiful campus. I uh, went and saw the Book of Kells exhibit, and then, I mean, the highlight for me was getting to be in the, uh, I think it's just called the Long Room there. It's the very sort of photo-iconic, uh, library at Trinity College. It's you know, probably one of the more photo iconic libraries in the world, I would guess it was. Um, my desktop background for a long while. But yeah, there was the Book of Kells, um, and then after that there was the Archaeology Museum, which I thought was a bit underwhelming, though it was a really cool big fucking boat there. <laughs> it was just like 30 feet long. Um, and I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, the Archaeology Museum was like, whatever. Uh, and then I still had, you know, about an hour left to do the, the art museum. Um, which was mostly like, at least the stuff I saw was mostly kind of post-Renaissance sort of paintings. Um, and I posted about it on Instagram and made funny little shit post captions, and that was fun. Hello, Nate in Post here. Uh, probably one of my favorite Joycean events was a play uh, that I obviously wasn't allowed to film, so no footage of that, but I do have this footage of uh, some drawings of the 
of Ulysses that were featured at the art museum that I went to on Tuesday. On Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, the night of the 15th, I went to a one-man 90-minute play called uh, Bloom in Auschwitz. And honestly, even putting aside the absolute mental feat of basically reciting a schizophrenic 90-minute dialogue. I thought the performance was uh, oddly physically demanding, um, or else he just did a good job of using his physical body to add to the intensity of the performance. The play takes the premise that Bloom comes out of the life of the single day of the book, like he's been living some kind of Truman Show, Groundhog Day type of existence within the confines of the book. So he gets sort of taken up out of that um, and gets to live in the future beyond this singular day. And with the way the 20th century went, this obviously leads his character to understand that sort of the price to pay to know the future is to know the exterminations at Auschwitz. Uh, You know, obviously not super cheery at points, but... um, it's really good. Uh, it's really strange, and it was very well performed, I thought, especially. Uh, it's by a guy named Richard Fredman, and it apparently sort of like came out of play retirement for a final run during the centenary. Uh, though it did have some surprisingly current commentary on Israeli occupied Palestine. So that was pretty good. Um, yeah, Bloom and Auschwitz uh, by Richard Fredman. Check it out if you can. Happy Bloomsday, pilgrims. <laughs> so, in, I guess at least Ireland, McDonald's has uh, cheese toasties, which are, looks like just pita bread and uh, some of that really cheap, like, Kraft Singles cheese, almost, it looks like. What was funny to me is that they have a cheese version, and then they have a bacon and cheese version but they're the same price so what exactly does that say about the quality of bacon that they're giving you that it's literally nothing more to put bacon on I didn't get any bacon I don't trust McDonald's bacon not that I should trust their cheese or their uh, pita bread I don't think I hold the novel Ulysses as sacrosanct as many other literary nerds do. Which is not to say that I don't revere it and love the book, I do. Um, But I'm much more the equivalent of like a Easter and Christmas Catholic when it comes to Joyce's fiction. um, As compared to some of the more devoted acolytes out there. And I think being being in and around Dublin, being in and around Bloomsday events this week, I've, you know, very much come to recognize um, how much closer the book is to other people. For some people, there are mountains that they climb inside of this book, and I am simply happy to sightsee. For me, it's James Joyce the artist. James Joyce, the author, the person, his biography that I'm much more attracted to. Obviously, a lot of that makes its way into his fiction. His fiction is very autobiographical. I mean, he dared to become the literary giant that he eventually did become, you know? The artist, like the god of the creation, remains within or behind or beyond or above his handiwork. Invisible, refined out of existence, indifferent, paring his fingernails. I was at a talk for a new book uh, called Nora by, I believe the woman's name was Nella O'Connor. But she pointed out that 
the Joyce's lives were um, relatively domestic, especially compared to, say, like the Paris literary scene. They were sort of the old fogies, the old squares that were in their 40s and, you know, had kids and called everyone Mr. and Mrs. For all of the kind of, I don't know, perhaps bohemian literary uh, imaginings or ambitions that maybe a guy like Joyce had, all he really wanted was just a change of scenery so that he could be domestic on the continent as opposed to domestic on uh, one of the islands. I've been reading a Shakespeare biography this week, um, and the same thing with Shakespeare kind of keeps coming up, um, that he was this pragmatic person, he was this businessman, um, uh, that he, he was not, you know, the carouser that, say, a Christopher Marlowe was. Um, there was a sense of responsibility about him. Um, but he also, with that responsibility, had this wild ambition. He had a relentless sense of competition with his peers. He imagined himself you know, certainly as being a kind of great, as being a kind of genius, as being peerless. There's that part of his heart that was never afraid to believe in its brain's genius. And Joyce had that too, you know? And there are probably a lot of people that had that too that we've never heard of, that have tried and failed, never tried, ever failed, to quote a different Irish author. But if you're going to be great, you have to boldly believe in yourself, even and especially if you're like Joyce or Shakespeare, in that you came from, you know, the same place any of the rest of us came from somewhere local, slightly provincial, in a place you're kind of desperate to get out of. It's been a really tiring week. I took a vacation so I could go exhaust myself at something else other than my job, I guess. I'll have a couple days, you know, I'll have the weekend and then two more days, so I should be fine and I should get plenty of rest, but very tiring. It was very full, and I don't think uh, I've absorbed everything that I did quite yet. <laughs> but I'm really hoping that this vlog will maybe help in that department.